The following program is a SUTV student production. The views expressed are not necessarily those of Salisbury University, the University System of Maryland, its regents, administration, officers, employees, or representatives. Such as Vice President of Student Affairs, Dr. Good evening and welcome to SUTV Evening News. I'm Miranda Haney. Salisbury University canceled the February 25th tailgate in an email sent out to the campus community on Thursday. In this email, SU's Vice President of Student Affairs, Dr. Dane Faust, said that although the tailgate on Saturday, February 18th was well attended, the women's lacrosse game later that afternoon was not. The university called for refinement of the tailgating program and held a community meeting last night in the GUC to plan the future of these events. The committee emphasized that the tailgate is not meant to be a day drink and proposed to create a student section in the stadium stands to promote attendance. There will be a tailgate this Sunday, March 5th at 9 a.m. before the Salisbury men's lacrosse game against Ohio Wesleyan. Stay tuned to SUTV for more updates as the semester progresses. Salisbury police have reported three unrelated shootings in the past week with zero arrests. As of today, no lives have been lost as a result of these shootings. According to WMDT, state, city, and county police officers are working together to investigate the cases. Officer Kelly Hitty of the University Police Department has some tips on how students can stay safe when traveling on and off campus. And then my suggestion, since this is not just here on campus, but this is just about anywhere, make sure your doors are locked and your windows are shut, always. I don't care if you're running two minutes into your dorm and then back out or to a store or not. That's just enough time for somebody to go ahead and grab your car, whether you like it. Make sure nobody's inside it. Check both in before you get out and before you get in your vehicle. And don't be distracted. Like if you see something on your windshield, my suggestion, leave it there before you go somewhere. You don't need to take that little flyer off, but sometimes people use that as a way to rob you or to go ahead and get into your car. So a lot of people don't may not realize that, but that is seems to be a common scam that could be going around. Um, always make sure you have your keys in your hand before you get in and out of your car. That way you're not fumbling with it, specifically if you're gonna be parking in an area that may not be as well lit. Know your area, know where you're going, my suggestion would be if you feel like somebody's following you, the best suggestion I have for you, take them right to the police department. They're not going to know that's where you're going. So instead of going home to your dorm or any other place, go right to the police department. It doesn't have to be Salisbury University. If you happen to know where Salisbury City is or you happen to be coming across the state police barrack, take them right into the parking lot. Officer Hitty also recommends telling a friend your destination when traveling alone and to notify the police as soon as an incident occurs. And this week is National Eating Disorder Awareness Week, and one SU student is using her artistic skills to spread awareness about the issue. Riley Fanning has more. National Eating Disorder Awareness Week is here, and one SU student is organizing a live performance art event on campus. We sat down and discussed her inspiration. Um, well, I am a double major in conflict analysis and issue resolution and also sculpture. And so my main passion is to like intertwine both of those majors to make artwork that talks about like issues that are going in, on in society through my sculpture. I think that for me, my art is all about my own personal journey. I always start with my feelings and my thoughts and my emotions and what's impacting me. And so these are the issues that impact me the most. And I figure if they affect me so strongly that somebody else has to feel the same way. And so I want to be like the voice for all those people and to let them know that they're not alone. My primary piece that I'm working on right now is for eating disorder awareness. So I am creating actually um, like somewhat of like a wood closet for an individual to stand inside. And once you enter it, 
you realize that you're somewhat getting like tricked into this area that you're isolated. For me, it's not even just about eating disorders, it's anybody who's ever looked in the mirror and felt like they weren't good enough. Her live performance will take place this Friday at 11.30 a.m. in front of the Academic Commons. National Eating Awareness Week continues until Saturday, March 4th. And now meteorologist Kenzie Lee is here in the studio with our forecast. Thanks, Miranda. February was a really wild month weather-wise, and March 1st has turned out to be just as crazy. We reached a high of 75 degrees today, which is crazy for this time of year. It was cloudy throughout most of the morning. It turned out to be sunny and beautiful throughout the day. And right now, we're actually under a severe thunderstorm watch. So let's take a look at today's risk outlook for severe weather. So you can see this orange region where we are is this enhanced risk region. That's actually the biggest risk, risk that you see on this map, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to get a severe storm. As storms move over the cold Chesapeake Bay waters, they tend to weaken. So let's take a look at the radar for right now. This radar is showing mostly rain as you can see, but this yellow area and the red is where we start to get the chance for those thunderstorms and the red especially where we could get those severe thunderstorms. So these storms are being moved into our area by a cold front that we can't see on this map. So let's take a look at the cold front on our current surface map. This cold front that you see back here is what's making its way into our area. It's pushing those storms towards us right now. So these storms are the same storms that you just saw on the radar, the radar and that's what could bring us Severe storms possibly, but mostly just spotty thunder showers tonight. This cold front, however, right now has a warm southerly wind coming out in front of it, which is what made today's temperatures so nice and warm. But as this cold front moves off the shore tonight, those, cold, those warm temperatures are going to go with it. Behind this cold front, there's really cold air that's going to make its way into our area into tonight and tomorrow. So let's take a look at today's high temperatures. Today we reached 77 in Western Maryland, 84 in Virginia and even North Carolina. Even up in New Jersey it was mid 60s, even low 70s. And all the way up into Vermont and New Hampshire it was in the 60s. But when we take a look at tomorrow's expected high temperatures, it's a totally different story. In Maryland we're only going to get to around 49 tomorrow. We're going to struggle even to get into the 50s. So on the eastern shore it could be a little warmer because we have all that water around us that tends to keep us a little bit warmer. But most of Maryland's going to struggle to get out of the 50s. We have really cold temperatures off behind it. Even down in the south, it's only going to be in the 40s. So let's take a look at the Thursday planner. Tomorrow around 8 a.m., it's going to be 48 degrees. It's going to be sunny throughout most of the day and very windy. By 2 p.m., it's going to warm up to 50. And by 6 p.m., it's going to be around 46 degrees. So let's take a look at the five-day planner. Thursday, it's going to be a high of 52, like I said, very windy. And Friday, morning we're only going to get to a low of about 34 degrees. Friday it's going to be partially sunny throughout most of the day, very windy once again, high of 51. Saturday it's going to be sunny but it's going to be a lot colder. We're going to have a high of only 44 on Saturday and Friday into Saturday our low is going to be 27. Saturday into Sunday our low is going to be 29. So those temperatures are going to be a lot colder this weekend but Sunday into Monday we're going to warm up again. A high of 54 on Sunday and a high of 63 on Monday, partially cloudy both days. Thanks, Miranda. Back to you. Thanks, Kenzie. Wow, with all that crazy weather, weather, I'm sure glad we have you in the studio to tell us what's up. If you were walking around campus today, you may have noticed some students wearing some black markings on their foreheads. These markings are being worn in observance of the Catholic Holy Day Ash Wednesday. We spoke to the event planner for the Catholic Campus Ministry, Jared Johnson, about the significance of this day. Well, Ash Wednesday is the uh, solemn celebration of uh, Jesus's 40 day uh, fasting trip in the desert. So we try to make that as closely as possible through not eating meat on Ash Wednesday and then Good Fridays. Uh, we uh, try to pray more. Uh, we try to give something up or be more giving to others d during these 40 days. Uh, the ash you see on all our foreheads, when the priest applies it, he says, from ash you came to ash you will return, which is pretty much just a reminder to all of us that we are mortal. One day we will not be here on this earth. That's something every religion can agree upon is that we, we won't live forever. So it's just to remind us to live a good life, make the most of what you have now, and do good on to others. The Catholic Campus Ministry holds Mass every Sunday at 5 p.m. 
SU's club gymnastic team hosted a high-flying meet this past Sunday. Arthur Lembo has that story for us tonight. Salisbury University hosted the second annual Salisbury Classic Gymnastics Meet at Beach Bounders Gymnastics Academy in Fruitland. Salisbury competed against University of Maryland and Rutgers in individual all-around and event finals. Salisbury's club leader, Jillian D, explains the importance of teamwork in gymnastics. A lot of gymnastics is mental, so you really need like the support of other people to like get and do a skill and like do it confidently. Because it's a club, it has all different skill levels, and we're just all doing something that we love, so I just think it's great. Salisbury's team practices are flexible and invite all skill levels. Gymnastics is one of the many sports at SU that meet off campus. I think it's really good to have sports that are off campus because it also shows like that Salisbury is like in the community, like Salisbury University is in the community, and like other like younger kids can see us and look up to us and be like, oh hey, they're college students, I can do that one day. The team plans to continue honing their craft and fundraising so that they can get a coach as well as the opportunity to compete once again at nationals. For SCTV, this is Arthur Lembo reporting. Thanks, Arthur. And three of those Seagull gymnasts will be competing in the National Club Gymnastics Competition this weekend in Ohio. Another way that SU students can stay fit and exercise is by visiting the Salisbury Skate Park on South Park Drive. I visited the skate park to find out more about its future and how it has already impacted the Salisbury community. This January, Governor Hogan announced his 2018 fiscal year budget, which allocated $180,000 to Phase 2 of the Salisbury Skate Park. Salisbury's Assistant Director of Housing and Development, Deborah Stam, was assigned to the project almost 10 years ago. And actually, I didn't know that much about skateboarding. My son never did it, and I never did it, and so I was... Um, uh, totally uneducated in terms of uh, what it's all about and what the culture is like and so forth, but the members of the skate park committee really showed me a lot about why they were so interested in the sport, um, why they're so dedicated to their craft and so forth. So it was really um, their enthusiasm and their drive that really um, made it personal to me. Through fundraising efforts by the Skate Park Committee, numerous grants, and a generous donation from Stam herself, Phase 1 was officially completed in December of 2015. The park is completely free of charge to skaters, which was the main goal when Bobby Schaller and the Skate Park Committee brought the idea to the city of Salisbury in 2006. It gives people a place to hang, a positive place to hang, and 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 lets them exercise in a positive manner, gives them something to do, gives them recreation for, for free. We wanted it to be a free public skate park, not a, not a paid one. This, you know, we don't, not everybody has money, so this is something for people to get into that just want to get into it, and it's great. According to Stan, the park has filled a very big void in the recreational needs of the Salisbury community. It's provided a positive outlet for the um, energy and exuberance <laughs> of both young and old uh, who are involved in that sport. For SUTV News, I'm Miranda Haney reporting. And if that budget is approved by the General Assembly, it then must pass the State Board of Public Works. STAM expects the decision to be made in late August or early September of this year. Well, Kenzie, I can tell you what, they really wanted me to try that bowl, but I would have really hurt myself. It would not have been pretty. That makes two of us, Miranda. Yeah, I wish I did for the story. I wish you did, too. Your station, <laughs> your story. And that's all we have for you tonight. Be sure to tune in next week for more news, sports, weather, and so much more. From all of us here at SUTV Evening News, have a great night. Whoa, they changed it up.